When someone buys a watch from me, I usually like to ask what inspired them to buy this particular watch. And then I love to sit back and listen to their answer. They usually go on to tell me some cool stories, mostly nothing to do with the watch itself, but events that happened long before or after the watch was purchased. That's because the watch that we choose to put on our wrist has more to do with our memories, our thoughts, our feelings, emotions and experiences and stories than it has to do with the actual lump of cold metal and springs and coils and cogs that tick away on our wrist. This connection phenomenon is called sensation transference. I'm Marcelo from Prestige Watches and if you've ever wondered why we all love watches like we do and why we spend so much of our harder money on high-end watches, I'd like to try and shine a bit of a light because really luxury watches make no rational or economic sense. We could all be wearing 10 pound digital watches that would last for years and be highly accurate or even no watch at all uh, and we could just use our phones. We don't need a watch just like we don't need music, and art and literature, and movies but just imagine how barren and bereft life would be without these lovely little things to enjoy. But what is it about our relationship to watches in general, and in particular the watches that we actively hunt down and purchase? Let's talk about it. So, transference was first coined by Sigmund Freud in his book Civilizations and Discontents in 1929, and it describes a situation where feelings, desires, thoughts, expectations, and then consequential actions move us forward from preconceived notions that we have about a person or a memory or a vision. I also own a creative marketing company that specializes in designing highly creative marketing products to help brands and agencies engage and interact with their customers. So I take a genuine interest in the psychology and the science of marketing and copywriting that goes into what works and what doesn't with selling, marketing and advertising. Now, we all create sensation transference. It connects us to things that we love. In our case, it's the watches that we love to buy. And I want you to remember this because watch brands and manufacturers work hard to create sensation transference to connect us to their products. They do it with their cool watch ads and their product placement in movies and their memorable brand storytelling and watches and history. They use sensation transference to catch our attention and then hijack our personal stories to romance us. They remind us of their engineering and precision, the ingenuity and the craftsmanship and the complexities of the finishing, the technical innovation, the history and the pedigree of their watches. And for watch brands to be able to profit from their customers, it comes down to one core thing, and that's emotional investment. The more emotionally invested we are in anything in our lives, the less critical and the less objectively observant we become. And the greatest emotional investment of all is falling in love. And this is because falling in love resembles a good story where this weird revelation hits you from nowhere and we long for something and we yearn and we think about it all the time. With so many brands and watches out there to choose from, why exactly do we like and purchase the watches that we do? What was it that formed the strong connection that pulled us in? What was the source point that made us so happy that it created enough emotion and feelings for us to pull the trigger and make the purchase? What compelled us? Well, us humans, as social creatures, we not only think about how a watch purchase will make us feel, but we also think about what the watch tells our tribe about us. And, as social creatures, our watch choices are little like a personal brand advert on our wrists. And whether consciously or subconsciously, it tells others in our tribe a little about who we are. That personal brand advertising is very real, and this gentle need to feel significant or appreciated to be connected or respected or, or even loved within our, our tribe, which in the case of watch enthusiasts is other watch collectors and watch enthusiasts, and sometimes even the general public as, as a whole. 
For me personally, I'm drawn to watches that suit my lifestyle and tell the world a little about me at the same time. I once saw a cool looking chap wearing a two-tone Rolex Submariner, black and gold, at an airport. I noticed it on his wrist and he glided effortlessly around the, the airport and sat sipping a coffee calmly in front of me, looking cool. The watch exuded what for me was the perfect blend of love for adventure and luxury. It portrayed a slightly more refined debonair look over the more common all sports steel Rolexes and was a great looking gentleman's watch. Now my situation at the airport at the time wasn't so effortless, I was with my wife and my kids of three and five and while we were trying to calmly enjoy a coffee before boarding the plane with a 3am start to the day, my wife pointed out that my little son didn't have his backpack with him. Now, totally my fault, um, despite me assigning the responsibility of his backpack to him, little ownership lesson of responsibility and a teaching opportunity, I knew exactly when we'd taken it off and set it down to take out one of his little Avenger figures. So knowing where it was after a long-ish run back to retrieve it, I arrived to four heavily armed airport security personnel all standing around guarding it. Now I couldn't see what the problem was, after all it was just a little black rucksack full of Avenger toys and kiddie snacks, but of course they didn't know this and they were quite quick and stern to remind me of all the dangers of leaving unattended backpacks in, a, in an airport. Uh, I politely agreed and lesson learned and headed back to my family in a bit of a sweaty mess. Uh, but coincidentally I sat next to uh, the Rolex wearing gentleman on the plane and even without talking to the man his watch told me so much about him. Enough so that I ended up purchasing one for myself not long after and it became one of my favourite watches. And if I had to choose only one watch it would probably be this. And if someone sees me at an airport and glances at my watch, I kind of hope it will do the same job of telling them about my love of watches and adventure and also my appreciation for the fine little things in life. And when I think about all my favourite watches and brands, there's normally a story attached to them. Now, you may have never wondered too deeply about why you chose to buy the watches that you did, but in the back of your head, maybe deep in your subconscious, just like my story about the man at the airport, or perhaps a story of my dad's old 1960s citizen dive watch, reminding me now of a little nine-year-old me in 1985, pretending to be James Bond in A View to a Kill, talking into it and controlling satellites in space, you too will most likely have a story, a memory, a feeling that creates sensations and connects you to that watch. Somewhere along the line, you would have created sensation transference and you locked in this positive connection. Now watch brands know this and they create sensation transference too. They give their watches charming romantic personalities and tell you brand stories, which are kind of like your stories only with their products woven into them. They remind us that their watches are mini brand museums, precious artifacts that can be worn on our wrists and should be adored by watch lovers around the world. Their adverts and articles, commissioning of influencers, product placements in movies and brand ambassadors and websites and cool video content, well-timed TV adverts and social media promotions, they know what they're doing. And then they build in little familiarity by playing with our nostalgic thoughts and our dreams and our needs and wants and desires. And just like that, the watch brand have connected their product to you using sensation transference. It's all pretty powerful marketing and advertising stuff designed to make you want and need what they're selling. And in today's information driven world, there's no shortage of rich history and information deep dives about particular watches or brands. And this really helps to strengthen the sensation transference and the pull of the watch towards you. Now, sometimes sensations are wrapped up in a much larger package. If you're anything like me, you enjoy watching James Bond movies on the big screen. Then the experience starts the minute you step out of your car and you wander into the enormous building, perhaps with a few mates, and you buy some popcorn and a drink, and then you make your way to the darkened room and you sit in what will be your seat for the next few hours. You enjoy the trailers of the upcoming movies and then along with a load of other people in the room, you get taken on a movie experience for the next few hours. It's for this reason that the release of the Bond film No Time To Die was held back for a year and a half because the studio wanted it to be a big screen cinematic experience. And after watching the movie at the cinema, we drink it all in 
and straight after the movie sensation transferences is a light because the movie companies also do a great job of creating sensation transference. It's a full experience, everything you saw, heard and imagined all influenced our thoughts. And for some people, it really influenced their thoughts, like on overdrive. And although Bond is a totally fictional character, they enjoyed the movie so much, some hardcore followers will leave there thinking, man, I like Bond. I really like Bond and I want to be more like him. I, I want to walk like him, talk like him. And then they go away and they, they wonder how they can be more like him. Uh, from his suits, his demeanor, his sunglasses, his hair, his watch, his car, his choice of drink. There's a huge emotional pull towards this character that's created by the writers and the movie studios. And this could be said of any movie or documentary, not just a James Bond one. It could be any program about a person or hero or subject matter that we have an interest in and we make time to watch and study. And this magic of sensation transference, it works because we crave these positive connections to our watches. I personally love watches that I have a connection with at any given moment in time, that forms an association to other people maybe that I admire. And for me, it's this emotional attachment that creates the soul of a watch. And this is where sensation transference is at its most potent. A good watch should create sensation transference because that unconscious assessment we make about a product based on how it makes us feel is an additional value add on top of the actual material parts of the watch itself. And going back to my Bond movie example, Bond lovers come out of the cinema feeling pumped and eventually those feelings subconsciously drive them to want to feel more like Bond. And when they see an Amiga Seamaster in a store with a great big Bond display next to it with pictures of the man, they may be compelled to purchase the Amiga watch. And now they feel a little closer to Bond. And the watch purchase was born out of sensation transference. Another example, perhaps you love Tony Soprano and you go and buy a gold Rolex day date with a champagne dial to celebrate this fact. Wearing the watch connects you and brings you closer to him. It reminds you and maybe others of your love of the character. Maybe even makes you feel a little like him. Or wearing your Casio CA50 calculator watch, the same watch that Michael J. Fox wore as Marty McFly in Back to the Future in 1985. It may evoke nostalgic feelings for bygone times and places that make you feel happy. With watches, this happens all the time, whether it's pilot or field watches making us feel adventurous, dive watches making us feel rugged and manly, gold dress watches making us feel suave and sophisticated, chronographs connecting us to the racetrack, movie stars, musicians, politicians, presidents, celebrities of all walks of fame, past and present, the list of connections, of feelings and sensation transfer goes on and on. And we can all feel a little closer to these heroes by wearing the watches that they wore. Whether watches connects us to a place or a dream or a memory or a person, the stories around them and the link to them create overwhelming emotional desire. Enough to make us go out and spend our money to buy a watch like the one that they chose to wear. Just like dresses and sunglasses and cars, makeup and so on. The greatest hook brand marketers aspire to is for you to fall in love with whatever it is that they're selling. Not in a traditional sense, but in a product placement sense, carefully creating powerful advertising strategies to drive you to spend your hard-earned money on their product. They know that their storytelling will be injected into our brains, flooding us with feel-good hormones like dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, and triggering our emotions enough to deepen our connection with their product and make us happily spend our money on what we want to buy. They play with our feelings and desires and tap into our needs and wants and dreams. Brands and movie makers, they're not silly, they, they know what they're doing. And if it's not the brand marketers doing it intentionally with their fictional characters, then it's the most powerful and successful brand promotion of all, the one that creates a, a, an almighty massive pull and that is our heroes wearing a watch, not because of brand endorsement or paid sponsorship or because they were contracted to, 
but because they chose to. Watches are part of our culture and they connect us with stories and desires and the same is not only relevant to celebrities but also the strong connections to family members and friends. A watch given to us by a loved one represents a symbol of love and thought and kindness and meaning, usually enriched with a, a deep value and a spirit of powerful memories that could and should never be taken away. A gifted watch can help you to feel close to a lost family member and remind you of them and take you deep into to distant memories of them. They can become cherished mementos and almost help you to feel their presence. Um, the connection I have with my late mother's watch and my dad's old diver watch and my grandfather's old pocket watch is, is off the scale. In fact, I know of collectors that buy watches just to leave them to their next family generation members as tangible and personal reminders of them. So, in conclusion, why do people like to buy luxury watches? It's not just love, and it's not lust, and it's not just the thrill of the hunt. The feeling of watch love is an intensely deep appreciation of both the physical attributes of the watch and also the powerful storytelling around the watch by the brand. It's a coming together of respect, admiration, craftsmanship, design, history and prestige and the insane emotional feelings of sensation transference. And these feelings and emotions merge together to form a sensation explosion that then goes on to create a deep sense of desire. We fall for the history of the brand's inception and the story behind its growth and the spirit of why their watches were created. And then the satisfaction of the journey from wanting to hunting and then obtaining the watch, the thrill of the hunt, in order to arrive at a, an endpoint of sensation and satisfaction. It's to do with the identity that the watch makes you feel, the sensations that you undertake just by putting it on, uh, and whether your watch is a status symbol or a token of love or achievement of success, maybe an heirloom, a, a collectible, for some it's a display of wealth, for some it's a memento of, of a loved one. Ultimately, we're buying and wearing feelings, not products. We're not purchasing things as much as we're buying identities and state of minds and far off dreams. We're wearing emotional connections to distant memories and future dreams. And for most of us, watches are far more than just a tall watch, they're, they're a passion. And we're wearing and appreciating the art the soul, the sentiment and the, the joy uh, that watches were made to give us. So what about you? What, what do you think of sensation transference? Can you relate to it with your watch buying or maybe watches you're about to buy? Please do tell me, I, I'd really love to know. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Do you know something about this subject matter? Are you in marketing or advertising or a behavioural psychologist? I'd love to know. Do you have any experiences that you can share? Honestly, again, I'd love to hear them. And thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really love putting this video together. If you got any value from it, please um, like the video by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more of this sort of thought provoking watch related stuff, uh, please subscribe uh, so you don't miss any new video uploads and hit the little bell also so you get notified. If you have any other comments or requests for other topics, please let me know in the comments. I'd genuinely love to hear from you. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next one.